Hey guys, welcome to Travel Feels. Today we're going to be talking about the cinematic color grading course. So the question that I get asked most often is how do I color grade my films? And last year I started to make some teaching courses on udemy.com. The first course I made was on wedding videography. Um, I just found that that was something that a lot of people were asking me about also. That's kind of how I got started in filmmaking. So that was my first course that I made last year. And people seem to really like the course. So my next course that I just published is the cinematic color grading course. And this is a course where I go through my whole process of color grading. I talk about things like uh, theory of color grading, the things that are kind of going on the, in the back of my mind while I'm grading. I talk about what to do when shooting to have the best possible starting point for your footage. Um, and then we talk about things like color correcting, color grading, workflow. And then I go through a bunch of examples using different programs and different techniques, different plugins. So it's a really extensive course on color grading. And I'm gonna be showing you a couple of lectures today from that course. And if you like what you're seeing, feel free to check out the course and maybe take it yourself. For the launch of the course, I'm gonna be offering 33% off the course, but those coupons are in limited quantities, so make sure you get your coupon while they're still available. I really think that if you're into filmmaking and you wanna take your films to the next level, this course is really gonna help you out. I find investing time and even money into learning really pays off in the end. I've taken a bunch of courses myself, I've gone to different workshops, watched tons of YouTube tutorials to learn all sorts of things about filmmaking. So here we go. These are a few of the lectures from that color grading course. Scopes are basically tools that give you a more scientific or precise way of getting your colors and your exposures and contrast to exactly where you want them to be. We will take a look at waveform, parade, and vector scope. It's important to know that the numbers in the Ansel Adams zone system correlate exactly with the exposures in a parade or a waveform. At the bottom is zero and at the top is 100, just like in the zone system from zero to 10. So zero would be pure black, no detail, and 100 would be pure white, no detail. The waveform is probably my favorite to use, and I use it all the time on my camera and in post to see where the exposure is. The waveform represents an image from left to right, so you know that something on the left side of your image is represented on the left side of the waveform. Something that is on the right side of your image is represented on the right side of the waveform, and so on. So comparing your image and the waveform, you know exactly where the exposure values are. This is huge for color grading, and if you're not already using these, I highly recommend that you start learning how to use these things, especially the waveform scope. We will talk a little bit more later on about how to see where exactly the skin tones are in the waveform. For exposure, I really rely on the waveform, whereas for color, it's better to use the parade or vector scope. All three scopes can be used to see if an image is correctly balanced to white. That is to say that your whites are white and your blacks are black and not tinted blue, green, or red. Vectorscope only deals with color and it's really the best tool for evaluating your colors. It is a representation of the colors and saturation of those colors in the image. It's kind of like a color wheel, but it's showing where the colors lie. You could actually overlay a color wheel over this and it shows you exactly where your colors lie. To have a balanced image, the color should be centered around the middle and not shifted over too far to any other color. To see how saturated an image is, you can look at how far from the middle the colors extend. Higher saturation goes out farther, whereas desaturated images are crushed towards the middle. This is a great way to match saturation between shots. I've linked below a good resource on scopes and how to use them if you're still unsure or don't quite understand how scopes work. We will also be doing some examples later on, so don't worry too much yet.
So now that we've looked at theory and camera settings while you're shooting, let's get into the actual process of color grading. The first step is color correcting. Color correcting is the process of balancing your colors and your exposure in order for all your shots to match. You really should do it as your first step, but sometimes just out of lack of time, I actually do it after I've already chosen my look and added it onto my footage. This saves time because I don't have to correct each clip and then add the, the grade and then go through each clip again to make sure that everything is looking good. However, if you're not used to color correcting, this can be really hard to see the colors properly because you already have the look changing the colors. So I do recommend color correcting first, especially when you're learning and trying to understand the way the colors work. I would say most professionals color correct first and not after like I sometimes do it. Color correcting is really where the theory comes in handy. You need to be able to see if the image is balanced and if not, why? And this is in respect to um, colors, saturation, contrast, all those things. For example, what's off about this image? It looks like there's a green tint. After you know why your image is off, you have to technically know how to balance your image using a plugin like the color wheels or curves. Okay, so we have a green tint. Let's fix it by moving the highlight color wheel to the opposite magenta area. And there you go, now it looks much better. This takes a ton of practice, like a lot of practice. The more you do it, the more your eyes adjust, the more you can see the very, very small differences in colors. Your eyes need to learn to see when the image is too warm or too cool, or maybe there's a green tint or magenta tint. Whatever it is, you need to be able to see that so that then you can correct it. This is where scopes come into play. They are a great way because they're scientific and specific, whereas your eyes can be subjective. One person might see colors differently, or if you've been staring at a green wall, you might see the colors differently than without that green wall. Scopes tell you where the exposure value is or where the colors are exactly, whereas your eyes can play tricks on you and you might think it's too warm and then you go away for a bit and come back and then you realize, no, it's fine or it's actually too cool. This is why sometimes it's good to take a break if you've been grading for a long time and just come back with a pair of fresh eyes as your eyes start to adjust as you're grading. Again, scopes can be a little bit hard to understand at first. Even for me still, I don't always know exactly what's going on, but practice, 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 and they really do help you. For the most part, I use scopes like waveform to adjust my exposure, and then I do the color more so by eye. And that's when I'm really more rushed and I don't have as much time to go exactly into the colors. Unless there's an issue that I can't solve, I just don't know what's going on, then I go to the scopes and then you can see, okay, yeah, there's a magenta shift. It also really helps to have something white to white balance from. If there's nothing white, then it can be really tricky to see if your whites actually are white because there's nothing actually white in the image. You can also try and use some of the auto white balance functions in some of the plugins, but they don't always work very well, but sometimes they can give you a good starting point and understand that, yeah, okay, it's correcting to add more blue, then you know that, okay, this image is too warm. As I mentioned, there are different tools that you can use to color correct. There's the color wheels, like three-way color corrector or colorista, and then there's things like curves, which can also do color correction. I choose to use Colorista 3. I just, I really like the control you have in there and I've just really gotten comfortable with it. Plus it works in Premiere and After Effects, so it's really nice that I have the same plugin in both programs. With Colorista 3, you can quickly change the colors of the shadows or the midtones or the highlights and the exposures of each. And on top of that, one of the big things is the HSL section which stands for Hue, Saturation, and Luminance. With this, you can affect each color separately. So you can change one color's hue, or saturation, or luminance without affecting every other color. For example, if I want to make the skin tones look brighter, a bit more saturated, and a bit less green, I can do that all from the HSL section.
Thanks for joining me on Travel Feels, and if you like what you're seeing, go down and subscribe and like and all that. Follow me on Instagram. I will see you guys another day.